Earlier today, Cyberpunk 2077 got a new update. This is the highly anticipated patch 2.11, and this very well could end up being the final update Cyberpunk 2077 ever gets. It was about a 4GB download for me on GOG, but way larger at 53GB on consoles. The reason for this size discrepancy is how patches are applied. On PC, you're largely just downloading the patched files, while on consoles, you're re-downloading the entire archive each time. But this one came with quite a few very important changes and even a couple of new features. See CPR has once again changed the reward you get for completing all of the gigs for Regina, that being the Cyber Psycho related fixer. Her new reward is a tier 5 version of PAX, which is actually pretty good. PAX is that mod that'll make your weapons non-lethal, but since 2.0 also will give you a flat damage bonus when out of combat, so typically when attacking from a stealth position. Every tier of PAX except tier 5 will also come with a damage reduction, so as a trade-off for the giant out of combat damage bonus, you have a slight damage reduction across the board. But this tier 5 version is just a straight up damage increase and non-lethality. So this is pretty handy. If you're a stealthy user, you can get a flat 20% bonus on one of your weapons. And as of right now, the only other way to find this tier 5 version of PAX is randomly from airdrops in Dogtown. Although for me at least, this one actually had an issue. The patch notes describe that if you already completed all of Regina's gigs on an existing save, the item will just be there waiting for you in a chest. And it was for me, except this chest is locked. It should unlock because I have all of the gigs completed, but for some reason it didn't. The only way I was actually able to get this new item is by loading an older save where I still had one gig left to complete for Regina, then after completing that, it unlocked properly. And this PAX reward is additive. You'll still get this new cyberware from her after you complete all of her gigs, and even Skippy can still be gotten from her with no AI after that questline. But the cyberware was updated today as well. It'll reduce all of your other cyberware cooldowns when taking out enemies. And with today's update, this will include enemies that you take down non-lethally, so it's going to synergize super well with PAX. When beating the game after completing Phantom Liberty now, you'll get a new message from Solomon Reed on all of the other endings. The way this worked previously was he would only appear during the specific Phantom Liberty ending, but now he'll apply to all of them. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's any new voice lines, it's just reusing some of the old clips from the original ending. A surprise new feature to drop with patch 2.11 is Crystal Coat. This will allow you to repaint the Rayfield cars in-game, or at least most of them. So now, after jumping into either the Caliburn or the Arendite, and you do specifically need to be in the car to paint it, and effectively after using the toggle it'll open up this full color wheel with brightness options as well as both primary and secondary color options available. And you can change this on the fly freely, simply pull over on the side of the road or don't and just start changing the color of your car and you'll see it transform before your eyes. There's also a really cool feature of whatever secondary color you pick will apply to the headlights, so they'll illuminate in that color at nighttime, and you can just kind of see them in that color while driving around. There's a couple of interesting quirks with this system though, the color changes will not work on the all black caliburn you can get from the bat cave that one is not eligible for this but for one reason or another your paint jobs will also only apply while you're in the car as soon as you exit the car it'll transform back to its original color slate your paint job is saved it'll just only actually be applying while you're sitting in the vehicle and it is a really cool feature a lot of these paint jobs look surprisingly good even without having to put all that much thought or effort into it and hopefully we start to see this come for more cars in the future if we're getting any more patches for this game brake torque vectoring was added to the drive mod Model simulation with this update, so you should notice notably less understeer when driving mid-engine or front-wheel drive cars. And in real terms, this will make it so when you're using some cars like the Porsches, a lot easier to turn while you're braking. So while you're turning and braking at the same time, you can maneuver a lot more successfully here. Previously, you would fishtail a lot more often, and a lot of that is gone. This change actually feels really nice. And there were a wide variety of other changes with vehicles. Tire marks left will now accurately match up to whatever vehicle you were using to leave those tire marks, and many vehicles got their burnouts and drifts enhanced. And there's almost just a flat balance pass for the vehicles. All of the ones you see here were retuned with this update, meaning that their power curves and even general handling should feel a bit different. Testing this out with the Ken Block Hydra, I found that it had better acceleration and just in general was a lot more fun to drive after this update. But another gigantic quality of life change related to cars is they made those random vehicle chases more spread out. This was added with patch 2.1, and basically how it originally happened was every time you'd get in a car after patch 2.1, somebody would come chasing you. But now with patch 2.11, 
enemies will be much more spread out and they won't stack quite as much previously. No more getting attacked every single time you get in your car after updating, although I imagine for most of you, you've already cleared through many of these chases. They added a new section for radio port settings in the menu, that being your new portable radio. They're really just three toggle switches, but each are incredibly handy. You can have it so the radio port just starts automatically playing as soon as you load into the game. You can have the radio port be completely disconnected from the car radio. So this will make it so your radio pauses when exiting the car, or if you don't want the same stations and the volume slider to carry over. But perhaps most important of all, you can now toggle cycling stations with the radio key or having it be a stop start key. This is a direct response to fan frustration. In the older versions of the game before patch 2.1, hitting the radio key would simply go to the next song or station. So you kind of drive around and just cycle through. Both patch 2.1 and the addition of the radio port, they made it so that same key will just be a stop start, which is really frustrating for a lot of people. Now with this update, you'll be able to choose one or the other with this toggle switch, which is a really great compromise from CDPR. If you missed out on some iconics in the past, you may have access to them now. Psalm 11.6 and Buzzsaw will now have their crafting specs automatically added to your inventory after you've done their respective missions. You get each of these from an assault in progress in Watson, but there are past bugs that made it so the crafting spec wouldn't drop when it was supposed to, and if you missed it, you should now just automatically have it in your inventory, a really nice change for a lot of players. And in a similar vein, they also made it possible to get the BFC 9000 if you missed it. This was a new weapon added with patch 2.1. It'll spawn right around here on the cliff side of the dam. The easiest way to get this one is simply drive down to this parking lot and then run across this area. But there was a quirk with this one. If you leave the area after the NPC and AV spawned, they would just despawn. And in turn, you could never get the weapon. So a lot of players would just drive down the dam, not even realizing this was here, and inadvertently have the AV and character spawn and then immediately despawn, blocking access to the weapon. Now with patch 2.11, if you leave the area, the AV will despawn, but the NPC will remain, and he's the one holding the weapon. So you'll be able to loot it for yourself, and you definitely should. This is a nice long, hard weapon to add to your arsenal, and it is surprisingly versatile with a lot of uses both in-game and in real life. Cyborg Capacity now has a hard cap at 450, or for me, 452, and after that you will no longer be able to increase it. Once you reach the max Cyborg Capacity level, Cyborg Capacity shards will also stop dropping. And this is a hard limit. If you have somehow surpassed it, any cyberware above 450 will automatically unequip. So if you notice that you have less HP or some other stat changes on your character, it's likely that you had cyberware automatically get unequipped. And this update made it so that as soon as you max out any skill, skill shards for that skill will stop dropping, which is just really nice, keeping things clean and tidy as you're looting your enemies. They removed the exploit from the Kagido Lattice Cyberware. This is one of the new ones added with patch 2.1, and it'll give you a gigantic boost to your armor when you're low on RAM. But there is an easy workaround for this. Just don't actually equip a cyber deck and use something like Berserk, where you have zero RAM, and then just equip one other piece of cyberware that increases your RAM, and you would get the full bonus from this, aka 250% armor all the time, because the game always felt like you were at low RAM. Unfortunately, now that is removed, so to get the bonus at all, you will need to have a cyber deck installed, which effectively removes this exploit. Although, of course, the most anticipated category of changes to come from patch 2.11 were bug fixes, largely addressing some of the bugs introduced by patch 2.1. Melee finishers are once again working properly, all the various styles of finisher can spawn and appear, although unfortunately, Sonic Shock was not fixed and it might not have even been broken. Sonic Shock is a core tool for Netrunners, especially early on. The way it worked was this. Simply upload Sonic Shock first, and all subsequent quick hacks would be stealth, so it would avoid this enemy trace that would typically occur from quick hacking. With patch 2.1, that was removed. It wasn't in the patch notes, so it was kind of unclear if this was an intended removal or not, but we did hear some users correspond with support who reported that it was in fact a bug. But now, here we are with patch 2.11, and either this bug still exists, or it wasn't a bug, and this was an intended change. Because even when using Tier 5 Sonic Shock, enemies are still freely able to trace me after I upload quick hacks. So right now, the only method for stealthy net running is using higher tiers of memory wipe, which is something that simply isn't available early game. So in effect, early game stealthy net running is removed from Cyberpunk, at least without mods. And honestly, I found this entire situation to be pretty frustrating. This change has never been in any patch notes. It's not like Sonic Shock was mentioned in patch 2.11 or even patch 2.1. So it still kind of is unclear if this is an intended thing or not. Is Sonic Shock supposed to allow you to be a stealthy net runner or is that 
got the bug and all they did was fix it. We haven't really gotten many comments from CDPR clarifying things one way or another. So for PC users, you could just mod this back in if you want to, but if you're on consoles, this kind of sucks. Stealthy net running is now going to be very different for you. They largely fixed the bug where quick use items would get scrambled or become unequipped when using consumables. So when you'd eat some of the random boosters or even food or drink in your inventory, this set of points lead to your health items being unequipped and then something random being added in to fill the slot. So now thankfully, this is gone for typical use. I was not able to casually recreate this bug in normal gameplay, but I did manage to get this bug even still during this quest as I feed another NPC a health item. You can see here, as soon as I give him this inhaler, my own inhaler is immediately unequipped, and later on in the quest, I have some random junk item filling that slot. So in typical gameplay, this should be mostly fine, but just keep an eye on it during questing because it definitely seems like it could still happen. A really big and nice one is they made it so the iconic version of Contagion can now trigger the explosion synergy with Overheat. Previously, this version of Contagion just wouldn't trigger that effect. Xbox players will now be able to properly upgrade Cyberware to tier 5++. There's a bug with the level 20 solo skill. With the fist, this should have a chance to apply bleed. It wasn't working before, but now thankfully it is, and I did test this, it's actually working. There's a bug where you could buy a vehicle from the autofixer website, lose the money, have it deducted from your account, but then never actually get the car. Thankfully, that too was resolved. Neonlit rims on the CT3X will now light up properly. This is broken with patch 2.1. They fixed the door in your main apartment, not closing automatically, so now it'll give you all of the privacy you need for those new hangouts. And if you're somebody using an AMD RX Vega GPU, there are reported performance bonuses for those GPUs specifically. Beyond that, there are a variety of quest fixes implemented with this one. If you're having progress blockers, many of those were resolved, some of which do require you reverting to an earlier save though, so make sure you read this section of the patch notes. And it seems like there were some undocumented changes, at least one that's known is this mirror bug, where V would sometimes just have a weapon in the mirror or during certain endings for the game. This was fixed. I wasn't able to recreate this. I saw many reports online of nobody able to recreate this now, but it actually wasn't in the patch notes. This update also did break mods. Many mods will now require updates. Thankfully, Cyber Engine Tweaks is already updated, so the process can begin. That's kind of a weird situation where even with this update, I found several bugs, even just a couple of hours of testing, as well as there were several other lingering bugs in the game that are still there. This update didn't address everything. It seems pretty likely we'll be getting further and future patches for Cyberpunk, at least probably. We don't really know what the situation is. A lot of people are moving on to other projects but we're obviously still getting new features even when that was supposed to be over too. But with that in mind, if you want to check out some of the latest and greatest mods to come to Cyberpunk 2077, give this video a watch.